Let's upcycle some random objects into functional decor. Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm hanging with Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling, Shelly of Repurposed My Way, Tracy of Tracy Vanover, Jody at Jody at Southern Seasons, and Susie at Susie on the Farm for the Lasting Thrifted Creators Choice collaboration. Let's get into it. I found this old red toolbox and I'm going to transform it into a paint holder. It's not in too bad shape, but it does have a powder-like coating on it, so I'm going to sand it down with a fine sandpaper to scuff it up a bit so that it'll be more receptive to paint. I'm using one of those 230 sanding sponges to, you know, scuff it up just a wee bit, and then I'm going to wash it down with some dish soap and hot water. There is some, like, grubby stuff dripping down the side. Not sure what that is, but as long as I get it flush, then I think we'll be okay. I'm going to give it a base coat with some Ceram Coat chalk paint and oyster shell. They no longer make this chalk paint, but it's basically just a medium gray. So I want to do this base coat because I think my paint, my spray paint, will stick better to it than if it was just on the metal. I'm just going to go ahead and give it two coats, both inside and out. Now that it's dry, I'm going to take it out back and give it a couple of coats of flat black spray paint. Now, this is just cheapy spray paint. They didn't have any specifically for metal at my hardware store. So we're just going to give this a go. And then I'm also going to give it two coats of a clear matte sealer. I'm using Rust-Oleum's Painter's Touch 2X Clear Matte Sealer. I've marked the center point on the front of my toolbox so that I can align my vinyl lettering. I headed over to my silhouette and quickly designed my lettering for this project and also for DIY too, but I'll show you that later. So first I made a rectangle two inches high because that's the height of the front of the toolbox and I made it eight inches long. I also filled it in black to match the color of the toolbox. I typed out my text, the word paint, chose my font, which is Atlanta Cruise, and changed the color to gray to match my vinyl. Adding the color isn't necessary, I just do it to help me envision my project. It's also easier for you guys to see it on this screen. I moved my text into the box and sized it. I want to add some striping on either side of the word. So first I'm going to make another black rectangle to size, which I think is about 4 inches. And then I'm going to use my shapes tool, choosing the square, and I'm going to make my stripes by elongating the square to size. I'll duplicate that stripe twice, giving me a total of three stripes. I group the stripes together, size them, and move them into the black box. I'm going to duplicate the whole thing again, and then I'm going to send it to cut. I'll position my vinyl onto the front of my toolbox, burnish it, and then remove the transfer tape. There is a wee bit of a lip at the very top of the box, so I'm going to make sure that I get that vinyl nice and flush. Now I'll add my stripes, and I didn't realize it until after that <laughs> these stripes are a wee bit off kilter, but you know what? It, it's fine. Yeah, the ones on the left, they're straight. <laughs> this is a permanent vinyl, but I'm going to seal it in with some DecoArt multi-purpose sealer, you know, just for good measure. And I'm just dabbing it on with a cosmetic sponge. And I only did this across the vinyl because I'd already sealed the toolbox with the clear matte sealer. Yeah, so that's it. She's done. And now I have a lovely wee caddy for my paint. I have here a couple of candle tins that have been washed out thoroughly. And I'm going to use these to make holders for my brushes and my tools. I thought these were really cute. They were already painted black and they smell good. So I figured I'd put them to good use. And this is quick and easy. All I did was head back over to my silhouette, design my vinyl, and cut it out. And it's pretty much the exact same process as I did with the paint vinyl. So I made the box to size added my text, 
created some, well actually just copied the stripes and sized them and sent the whole thing to print. Well, to cut. <laughs> I love my silhouette. It makes it so easy for quick projects like this. I put a piece of painter's tape at the bottom of my tin. I'm going to use that to align my letters so that the lettering is in the same place on each tin. You know, so it's the same distance from the bottom. Just going to burnish on my text. And then, of course, I'll add stripes too so that they match my caddy. I did manage to get the stripes nice and straight on both of these tins, so I'm proud of myself. <laughs> this is a nice functional way to tidy up my clay tools and my paintbrushes, and it looks pretty too. Much better than these ending up in a landfill. You feel me? Because of all the clay that I use, I have several of these Model Magic tubs. So I'm going to put these to good use. I'll upcycle three of them. They'll hold all of my various bits and bobs. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the label and wash the tub really well with dish soup and hot water. Then I took them out back and I gave them two coats of spray paint. I'm not 100% sure that the spray paint will stick. So I did add a top coat of Mod Podge just, you know, to help it out a wee bit. We'll see how long it lasts. I want to give this kind of a chalkboard appearance, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some blending gel and or floating medium, and I'm going to do a crosshatch stroke to give it the look of an erased chalkboard. I'm going to start off with Ceram Coat Drizzle Gray mixed with some blending gel to make it somewhat sheer. I'm just going to crosshatch in random directions to get that paint on there, and then I'm going to come back in with a clean brush that only has the medium on it and kind of feather it out. I did decide to just stick with the blending gel for this, but I'm sure the floating medium would work just as well. I'll let that side dry, and I'll move on to the narrow side and try it here. We'll see what it looks like once it's dry, and if I don't like it, you know, we can sort that out. After all four sides were dry, I wanted to come back in with some black and kind of tone down the smeared look a bit so that it's more concentrated in the center of the bucket. I did also use the blending gel with the black paint to kind of make that on the sheerer side. I am pleased that I did that because I think it looks much better this way. I repeated the process on the narrow side. I decided I really only wanted that smeared look in that concave part of, you know, the very middle of the bucket. Well, you can see. <laughs> Since the bucket is trapezoid shape, wider at the top, smaller at the bottom, I'm going to design my label in a similar shape. So I made myself a grid and I chose the design that I wanted. I'm moving the graphic into my grid here and I'll size it to fit within the grid lines. The top of the graphic will be even with the outer grid lines, and I'll size the bottom even with the lower grid lines. And that gives me a lovely trapezoid shape. I want to add a pattern to that center oval, so I isolated the oval. I brought the oval back into my graphics page, and I'll size it to match the one in the graphic. I'll hide all the layers except the oval. It's just easier to see what I'm doing this way. And now with my paint bucket tool, I'll fill it in with white and then I'll add the pattern. And I'll adjust the pattern within the oval to how I think it looks best. Once it's in position, I'll merge those two layers. Then I'll bring back my graphics layer in the background. I make any necessary adjustments. There. I love this graphic. It reminds me of like a circus train. You know what I mean? I definitely see me using this around Halloween. Anyway, I'll merge all of these layers together so that it's now one unit. I'll type out my text 
One box will be notions, one box will be novelties, and one will be ephemera. I'll center my text where I want it to go in the middle of that oval, across the harlequin diamonds, and I'll play with it until I'm happy with it. Each bucket will get two of these fancy labels for the wider sides. For the narrow concave sides, I've made these labels. I'll add the text vertically, and then I'm going to print everything out on white cardstock. I fussy cut all the labels, and I'm going to use some hickory smoke ink to soften and kind of antique the edges a wee bit. I'll use a wee bit of 3-in-1 glue to attach my labels, and I'll have some fancy buckets for my stash. There. Cute and useful. They look a lot better than they did. So this project is really more of a tip because I kind of made this a few years ago. So a few years ago, I removed the torn fabric from a canvas that I had and I painted the wood frame black and I added checks. It was the perfect fit for a piece of chalkboard MDF that I had in the basement, so I decided to put the two pieces together. So once I've removed the frame, I'm going to show you right here, I've marked the center point with a chalk marker. This makes it super easy and quick for me to line up my designs. I use this as a quick change decor piece by adding seasonal messages and images with shelf liner vinyl that I grab at Target for like five bucks. So I thought I'd share this since I was changing the Easter design to a more everyday sign. Because the surface of the MDF is slick, it's easy to both apply and remove that shelving vinyl. And honestly, you get way more of the shelving vinyl than you do if you buy the Cricut vinyl or the Cameo vinyl. And it works exactly the same as a temporary cutting machine vinyl. Right, so I'll peel off the Easter design and I'm gonna replace it with this French patisserie design. I do use this for like my kids' birthdays. I put a birthday message or, you know, like I said, the holidays, Christmas, Halloween. It always gets a new message, a new design. So you can see it's the exact same application as you would do on anything else with a vinyl rub on. And here it is all finished. This is one of my favorite things that I've done because it's so easy to change out. Okay, so let's take a look at all of our projects. I love being able to take found objects or you know, things you have laying around and turn them into something pretty and useful. So let me know what you think of my thrift flips. Please be sure to check out all the participants' channels and the playlist. I'm going to link their channels and the link to the playlist below in the description box, along with the list of my supplies. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time, up all night, with Monica.